Today's guest is Love Fahoda. She is a furloughed flight attendant at a legacy airline, the personality behind at Come Fly With Love on Instagram, founder of a Vokery, and most recently, the newest team member of the Sky Pirates. She'll be starting her own podcast called Under the Influencer, where, we sh where she will interview social media personalities from all aspects of the aviation field and provide insight, inspiration, and guidance on how to grow your personal and professional brand. If you're not interested in growing an audience, still tune in for what's sure to be pure entertainment as her infectious personality will give you a behind the scenes look at your favorite Instagram and YouTube personalities. Her first weekly episode of Under the Influencer will be released on November 12th. To make sure you don't miss her inaugural episode, subscribe to our YouTube channel and wherever you listen to podcasts. Love, welcome. Thank you. Wow, you made me sound really great. Well, you are really great. <laughs> I don't know if I'm all bad, but... <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we had the opportunity to meet you, what, maybe furlough Friday five or six, one of our first episodes we brought you on. Yeah. And, uh, Ever since then, we've kind of been working together um, and you've already provided us a lot of value and given us a behind the scenes look on, on how to, how to grow and, and market a brand and ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was fun being on your show the first time. Um, and I look forward to being on your show um, as a furloughed flight attendant during furlough Friday. And here we are today. So yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, we, uh, as, as most of our viewers know, um, the Opportunity Hour is designed to discuss the opportunity in the, in the workplace for aviators specifically, um, especially in the midst of COVID and the challenges it pre presents. Um, not all businesses have to be Fortune 500 businesses or have a, have a huge initial investment up front. Um, you've been able to uh, utilize your personal brand, which you've been working on for a few years now, which we can talk about uh, in detail, um, to actually um, keep you quite financially comfortable, uh, even in the midst of uh, not going to work at your airline anymore, at least uh, for the foreseeable future. Right. So um, we're here to talk about a vocary. Um, if you would like to give us a few, uh, the, the Cliff Notes version of what that is and what you're doing with it. It's a digital marketing company that um, pretty much focuses on building your brand, um, no matter how small the company or how large. We are a boutique agency, and so we focus on helping people tell their story, um, which is very big to me. Um, it's part of who I am as a person, really understanding who people are. And I, with my marketing background, I understand that it is so important to know a company's story before you buy their product or service. And that's what I'm here to do, just help them, whether it's uh, through account management or uh, developing a strategy, revamping their accounts. Um, uh, yeah. So in a nutshell. <laughs> So essentially, this is kind of your way to uh, scale for other people what you've already done for yourself. Well, you know, so I started out as an influencer. I don't know if we were going to get to this, yep, but absolutely. I started to, my whole goal in life is just to evolve, to become better, become better at everything. I used to think it was a problem being, you know, a jack of all trades, but I just wanted to learn more and more and more, whether it's about uh, reading more efficiently or, um, you know, dancing better or learning a language, just wanted to evolve. And so I've, that attribute is carried over into, you know, what I do, what I did as an influencer. And what I did was with each thing that I learned, whatever, however big or however small until today, like I just all I want to do is just get better and better and better. And I took it very, very, very seriously, you know, not to make the same mistakes. You know, um, as I say, knowledge is not power unless it's applied, right? So I learned all these things and I just got better and better and better. And with all the things that I learned, you know, I looked at everybody else and I said, whoa, 
you, you could be more effective if you did this. You could have more followers if you did this. Your, your, um, your content would be better if you just moved it over, moved the words over to the, to the left so it doesn't get cut off, you know, as a thumbnail. Uh, your, um, you know, you would have more engagement if you just did this. And so I started helping people out, smaller companies. Um, I approached smaller companies um, and I said, hey, you know what? Give me a chance. This is when I first started. Give me a chance. Let's do a trial basis. You know, um, I'm a travel influencer, but I believe that as a restaurant business, I can help you. You know, I could help your restaurant business in the experience part and the story part and the, in the, you know, the guidelines part, all of that. So why not do that? And so that's how it evolved into in, in a full-blown agency. So, yeah. The one thing I want to take away from that is knowledge is not power unless it's applied. That was amazing. I've never heard that before, but it makes complete and utter sense. Um, and like you said, these tactics, and I've, I've seen, uh, had a glimpse of them firsthand. They, uh, they apply to any industry. They're transferable to absolutely anything. It's simply tactics and how you, um, essentially, I think what I've noticed initially, you know, we've only been, uh, doing this for a couple of weeks now. Um, engagement is, it looks like, uh, tactic number one, is that maybe, am I missing something there? Or is that kind of it? I engage, agree. engage. Um, yes. and then you also have the, uh, and you know, let me, let me touch on yeah. that. The, the whole point of engagement is really having that connection with your audience, with your leads, as you want to call them, you know, just, just saying, Hey, I'm out here, you know, don't forget about us, you know, constantly having your name, your brand, your service in their head. So that when that time comes, when they need you, there you are in their face, you know, and you now with this engagement, it's, it's formulating a relationship with them to the point where they feel loyal to you, you know, so yeah, that, I mean, that's why it's so important. You mentioned um, that you got a lot of feedback early on. You, you know, made mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes early yeah, on. Yeah, I still it's make be mistakes. <laughs> it's best to, best to make the big mistakes when nobody's watching and learn from them. Um, Everybody watches. <laughs> who did you, who were you getting advice from that you valued early on? Anybody specific or was there like little tidbits of advice coming in from multiple different angles? So I always take advice. I'm always, I'm not perfect and I always wanna get better. And as perfect as I may think I am at one thing, there'll also be a different lens that comes in and says, oh, you know what? May look good to you, but hey, on, on a, you know, another standpoint, it, this is what, you're not really connecting. You're not really, you know, it's not, the visuals are bad or, you know, and so I love that. And that's how I've um, evolved to where I am today. But honestly, I attach myself to, because of my openness for advice, I attach myself to the biggest people that I can, you know, the most they're going to do is say no, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I dive in and I say, Hey, listen, you're going to mentor me. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to not waste your time. You're going to see me implement what you, you, what you teach me and I will come back to you and you'll be proud. And so I take my mentors very time, very, very, very seriously. Um, cause they don't have time to waste, you know, um, now where I am, I mean, I mentor 15 people and that's a lot, you know, so, and I do not want my time to be wasted, you know, but, um, any, any specific person, um, I don't believe in comparison, but I do have a group that I compare myself to that, that I learn from and that I also, um, you know, reach out to you so they can t t tell me and teach me. Kind of so. use them as a template, perhaps give you template, a template, yes. yep. using them as a template just to, to gauge myself and, you sure. know, where I gauge myself and my business and where it is, you know, so yes. Um, getting back to Evokery, uh, your boutique agency, 
you obviously the influencer side, but you also help out with account managing, analyzing, strategizing, teaching, and how to grow. Um, would you like to elaborate on some of the the back end services that that provides to an individual? Sure. Do we have like three hours? <laughs> Let's We've go. got as much time as you need. This stuff's fun. We can talk as long as you want. It's a lot. Um, so let's see. Um, I do provide the influencer experience. Um, what I do is with certain restaurants that need that help, you know, a lot of restaurants will, will have pictures of, you know, food, but that doesn't move me. You can have the best pictures of food in the world, but that doesn't move me. Show me who's the chef, you know, who's behind, you know, um, tell me the story of how the the company came about what grandmother was cooking and they made it into a restaurant you know um the so that's what i like to do i, I like to offer you know i know how valuable i am um to companies and therefore i offer that as well you know so i say hey let's let's do influencer um you know marketing to to help you okay um let's see the I'll do account managing later on, but as far as strategizing, um, what I do is I, I look at, uh, I look at, um, I watch an account, um, primarily on Instagram. I watch an account and I, I see how they engage. I see what, what they're posting. I see what their content is, where they get their content from, how good the content is. And then I strategize. I sit there and I basically tell them, listen, um, that's kind of almost account managing, but I, I sit them, um, let's go back, sir. So there's this part of my company, um, this goal in my company that says that, um, that, call, that you call analyze, that's called analyze to strategize. What I do is um, I literally look at what they need and then I give them a strategy. And I, I watch them for maybe a month to make sure that they're following what I suggested for them. Um, and uh, basically I guide them for, for about two, three months, you know, so that they're on track and to make sure that my strategy was, you know, efficient and mm -hmm. effective for them. Okay, and so as far as the account managing, that's where I sit there and I, I, I audit and um, I just watch their accounts for, you know, usually for several weeks, but I can normally, I mean, believe it or not, I can look at an account and just in a glance and say, oh, they're not doing well. You know, even if they're doing well, this is what they need. Very few accounts. Um, I've looked, there are very few accounts that I've looked at where I've said, oh, they're doing their thing, you know, um, even bigger companies, you know, and I, it, I guess it's just, it's, it's not that I for crit criticism, it's that I for, this is how you could do better, you know? Um, and so, yeah, basically a lot of times with these smaller companies, um, I'll say, hey, you know what, this is, these are areas you need to improve on. This is what I would totally redo because it doesn't apply to your story. I think it's important to have a page or to have an account that, that tells a stranger who you are. And if you don't, then uh, it's, it's not gonna be effective. You know, and, and you want social media to be effective because one, it is the most effective marketing in today's world and will be for a long time with people, especially with COVID um, happening, the pandemic happening, you know, you have a captive audience. People are just scrolling through and just, they, you, you, this is just for digital marketing. The pandemic was a blessing, you know, um, just having the, you call it the leads, but the, the followers, the audience to listen to your story. Why not now share it, go. You know, and that's where I come in to help people, um, help companies. Um, so we talk during account managing. We also talk about marketing goals, like where you are, um, what communities you need to reach, what um, what revamping needs to be done. What kind? We, we talk about advertising on social media. Um, some tactics, you know, that a lot of people don't know about, you know, a lot of these companies too, that I work with are older companies, like mom and pops that have been around for a while that need to create or to involve themselves, evolve themselves into the, di the digital media platform, di digital platform in general, you know, um, some of them have never touched a, a computer before. And so, um, you're on a roll and I don't want to interrupt, but so, with that being said, 
you're essentially talking because social media is new in the grand scheme of marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, those mom and pop stores, they're used to the marketing on the placemat of the local um, greasy spoon yeah. or the newspaper article, or for those that are fortunate enough to have a robust marketing budget, television. Right. But now mm-hmm. we have social media and for those business owners that you know despise social media from a personal perspective, it's essential for the brand. Um, yeah. Because not only does it show what you're doing, people can provide feedback on your services. That's right. That's there's right. there's two things, you know, from a marketing and advertising perspective: the organic reach versus paid advertisements. Um, right. You based on what I've seen in the short time I've known you, you seem to be an expert in the organic part. I'd like to discuss momentarily the, the paid part, but that organic part, you, um, it looks like everything you've done has been built to or organically over time and, and correctly. Um, right. And the organic part, while it is cheaper and probably quite honestly pays off more for the brand in the long run. Um, a lot of people are thinking paid advertisements, right? When you are, what, what is your philosophy on that and what kind of service and guidance do you apply, uh, via evokery when you're discussing the, the paid advertisement, when people ask those questions? Sure. Um, so when it comes to the organic growth, I think just like us as well, um, as people, you need to just be yourself, right? That's the whole you know, message of being organic. You just mm-hmm. need to be yourself. Your story, I think I've done so well because I tell them my story. It is yep. really my story. I didn't flabbergast it and make up some some made up story. This is who I am. You know, this is through come fly with love. My, um, my personal handle, uh, which became a marketing handle. Um, I just show people who I authentically am. I talk into the camera as if, you know, I'm talking to my followers and I tell them what I like. If you don't like me, then that's fine. But you know what, more than likely, I mean, it's shown that people actually do like me, you know, so why not be me? And what I do is a lot of people have a hard time, you know, following that, that message because you, you think, yeah, like old school, you think you, you got to have the huge billboard. You have to drive the fancy car. You have to do all these great things to, for the visuals, but it's not, it's, it's, it's your heart. You know, when you can capture, you know, your audience and your, 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 your followers and your um, just everyone around through your heart, you're good. And so that's what I do through my evokery company is I pull in that story. You know, it's the art of evoking emotions into actions. You know, before being emotional was bad, you know, it's like, oh, you're too much, you're too this. And I paid attention and I, I said, you know what, what is making people cry what is making people sad what is making and I listen that's that's the whole point of it all is just listening seeing what people want to become seeing what and part of my revamping process is telling people to be more of who they really are and so um I'm that is what my company really focuses on I don't know if I answered your question (laughs) yeah no you did um I just didn't know do you so essentially you don't even say we're talking about a local restaurant you're not even going to push them to do paid advertisements you're going to be like here's my story here are my employees here are their stories here are my customers here are their stories as opposed to you know let's make a 45 second commercial about how good our omelet is and you know blast it out to you know the the six surrounding zip codes type thing, or do you do some, a combination thereof? I do. Yeah, why not? You know, why not take advantage of, of both, you know? Um, yeah. Why not? I mean, why not? Yep. I think it's important to, to capture, you know, both sides. Cause you know, the emotional story side might not 
get people. Sure. You know, some yep. people don't have time for it. So yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it, before I interrupted you on, on the, on the organic thing, I just wanted to touch on it because I thought it was something that needed to be pointed out, you know, from somebody who's, you know, the older generation who might not be familiar with uh, social media, but, right. um, the, the, the business model of the Vokery is mm -hmm. this, if I'm a new customer coming to you, am I looking at like a monthly subscription or do we just chat and you're going to be like, all right, this is kind of what I think you need. This is what you're going to get from me. And each, each contract per se is different and negotiable or, or do you have like a list of here's the services I provide and here's what the price is. Um, I could do the latter um, provide, provide that, but I, I just don't think it's fair. Some businesses are larger than others. You know, um, being that organic crazy woman, you know, like focusing on or, or being organic all the time. Um, I think it's very important to, to really look at the company, you know, and see what they need. Um, I listen first, I listen and I ask them, what, what is it that you need? And that's why it's very important to, to do that first before saying, hey, you need this, this is what you need. Sure. You don't know what their goals are. You don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. You don't know what they've, they've done in the past. And so you, you kind of shift everything that you have um, every, and create a package. You know, so I create packages for them and um, I don't just give them, you know, the prices, but I give them, I tell them what they need. Um, and I tell them, you know, that I, I give them, you know, options basically. Sure. Okay. I mean, there, you can't give the same, you know, price to a, a small one person, you know, company that just started, yep. you know, next to a company. There's a company out there that, um, they have, uh, this restaurant, they have three restaurants. They're expanding. First of all, they didn't, they didn't believe in the, um, it's kind of a story, but they didn't believe in the, the, uh, the whole social media game because their product, their food is that great. It is, but it isn't, you know, you still need, who doesn't want to have a line out the door? It's you kind know? of like an excuse, right? <laughs> On good days. So what he did was he said, Hey, listen, we really, really, really need you. And I had to, I'm so grateful I listened to him. He said, we really need you because, um, yeah, this is, you know, for three companies, you know, we're going to pull you in and just start our social media game. Then he accidentally told me that within three years, they're expanding to 15 stores, right? And I was thinking, okay, and then they didn't want to pay me they didn't want to pay me on the 15 store deal. They wanted to pay me more on the one store deal. Does that make sense? One, mm -hmm. one account. And I was thinking, mm, yeah, no, <laughs> you're not going to do that to me. And so, so everything is like tailor-made, you know, yep. it, it depends on, um, you know, where you, where you are, where you're headed, um, what you need. Um, restaurants are very demanding because you, you need to get the experience part, the product part and the, the, the um, story part. Yep. So I work also, I used, sorry, my contract just ended with this, uh, a CBD oil company. Um, they're a CBD oil provider and that's just easy. It, I, I got the story really easy. And then just, you know, you don't really take pictures of the, you know, the, the manufacturing and the, sure. what is it, the factory. And so just facts and stuff. And so, yeah, that's easier, but I wouldn't charge him the same as, you know, this other account. And so therefore, um, yeah, I do have specialized packages. Okay. You, um, you were kind of talking again, before I interrupted you analyze uh -huh. to strategize. Um, yes. and I think that, uh, you didn't, say the word metrics, but I think you were kind of going down that path, maybe on your way to teach to grow too. Do you want to, you want to get back on track? Do you remember where you were? She, yes. Um, so I was talking about, um, like a lot of these mom and pops are older, um, older, uh, 
businesses with older um, business owners, a lot of them are in their 50s, 60s, who know nothing about, you know, social media, let alone the computer. And it's, you still need to somewhat convince them, you know, that that this is great. But once, you know, once they understand, um, it's, it's, it's so like mind blowing for them, you know, because it's, still very stressful because they don't understand it. They don't know how it'll work. They don't, they just, they just don't get it, you know, and there's no excuse. They just don't get it. They, Mm -hmm. a lot of them don't even have computers. Right. And so, um, I basically, I just sit down and I, I give them examples. I show them and kind of to what you said, you know, a lot of them think that social media is bad, you know, um, and it's okay to think that, but why not engage yourself in social media, but the right way, you know, in the beginning, I didn't look at social media, um, except to, to look at just positive stuff, you know, to say, you know, good morning, love, like today's going to be your day. Here's a new affirmation. Um, Hey, this is how you do, you know, take pictures better. Hey, you know what? Um, This is a great family activity that you and your daughter can do. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I've done was, basically I've taken that, I, I actually saw how many people needed that. Um, and so I would bring them into classes um, and really one main like social media one-on-one class. And that has evolved to um, now teach, you know, the older group that, but also the younger group. And so I'm kind of pulling it into from the, you know, account managing into the, um, the, the teaching aspect. Um, I don't think I'm a great teacher. I just like to share. And there are so many parents out there that are saying, you know, like our, our older, you know, generation, stay away from social media. Social media is not good for you. Social media is, you know, very bad, you know, but, but it's not because there's equally as many great things out there that there are bad, you know, if you know how to use it, then why not? So I, I decided to have a, part of the um, company where I've, um, I have some really great people that I've con- contracted out to teach that class. Um, it's like a, it's like a five, five session class where you teach kids, usually teenagers to maybe younger than teenagers, how to do social media, because it is the way of the world, you know, like it is the way of the future, excuse me. And it is the way of the world, but yep, sure. it's the way of the future. So, so why not, you know, why not know it the right way? Mm-hmm. And, um, so my daughter created her own account and um, I was pretty impressed because she utilized a lot. She, I mean, she had her own podcast. <laughs> she was, cool. I found one of these videos in her, in her phone. I was like, who are you talking to? And she just didn't say anything. I said, my friends, I said, what friends? You don't have any friends. What, what friends are you talking to? Because you, all your real friends know how to play Roblox. It was a Roblox tutorial. And so I was like, wait a minute. And I was so upset. I was so, so, so upset. Not that she created the account, but that she hid it from me. And I talked to my sister-in-law and my sister-in-law said, well, she's going to have it. You might as well just teach her how to do it right. And then that's when the light bulb clicked. Ah, why not use this company also to share with the younger generation, you know, to teach them how scary it can be, you know, um, how dangerous it could be but also, you know, to, to look at great things, to utilize it, you know, it's same thing with their content, have good content, you know, to put out there and to use as a resume for your, for your, you know, acting classes, your future agent, your, your colleges, you know, cause a lot of companies and colleges look at your social media nowadays. 100%. Like crazy. So do you so, think she was yeah. hiding it from you because she knows what you do and do you think that uh, it's kind of like being the the son of maybe like an MLB or NFL player? Like you'll never live up to their expectations and they're scared or. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, that's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. And I sat her down and I said, Let, well, let's talk about this. She's like, no. And I said, no, let's, let's talk about this. Why don't you want me to look at that? This piece of content. Is it because she likes to dance? Is it because your moves are a little too, you know, too older than your age? Mm-hmm. She's eight years old. Yep. And you know, and she said, yes. And so I asked her, I said, well, what part about that is bad? You know, and she said, 
you know, she gave me her answer. And that's what I, you know, that's what I want to coach her with, you know, and people with your kids, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, if you know, in your heart, it's not good, then you shouldn't put it out there. Yep. Same thing with bigger businesses. If you know that you're going to evoke a younger hip crowd and you're, you're going for that middle age, you know, conservative crowd, like don't put that content out there. So yep. yes. And she knows I'm, we have high standards at home, like mm -hmm. a lot. And that's coming from me being very strict, coming from my dad, who's, you know, uh, military, yep. <laughs> ex-military. Yep. So yep. yes. <clears throat> did, uh, did you want to touch any more on that teach to grow philosophy? It, uh... Um, I suggest that for all the parents out there that you one sit with, sit on, sit with me in a class or even just one-on-one. -on -one. And I think it's important for them to know what I'm teaching, but I, I implore these parents to sit with me and to really understand themselves that way they can parent right. Um, and then again, you know, have those kids in a different session, you know, l learn it as well, because there may be things that the parent, you know, parents could, could learn from it as well, you know. Um, so I think it's important to um, just have this class and I've looked all around and there are no classes out there. So yes. So if you're interested, you guys um, email me or follow me at Come Fly With Love or Evokery um, or email me. So yes. And that'll be in the show notes. Um, when we, uh, in the back of my head, when, when you were discussing teach to grow too, um, outside of um, guidance for the younger, younger generation, um, teaching to grow your following as well. Um, I know that's not what you mean by that statement, but um, there's the um, obviously growing with Instagram, which seems to be your specialty. I've noticed, and it's not so much that I've noticed it per se, I, I've, I've learned this by consuming and listening to other influencers as well, that the social media platforms age up. You know, Facebook started when we were in college and mm -hmm. it keeps aging up. Now the, you know, the, the early 20 somethings, most of them aren't even on Facebook anymore. It's people our age and our parents age on Facebook. Instagram is that younger demographic. And now we've got TikTok who is even, you know, the next demographic. Um, do you are you able to apply the same principles across all the different platforms? And are you always keeping an eye out for what's next for that next, uh, the next quote unquote, big social media hit? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's, that's something that, um, that most influencers and digital marketing companies do. They, they, they look out every week, you know, what is the best, um, if you see that person in the background, it's my daughter. Like, oh. <laughs> so, so, so tell so, the audience, yeah, so tell the audience started. where you tell the audience where you're at right now, though, real quick. Oh, I am in Key West. Think about it. <laughs> it's the hat. <laughs> I'm in Key West. Um, had a lot of fun last night um, on Duval Street and at the wharf. And so, this, you know, working in digital marketing has allowed me to work remotely. And um, yeah, this is, this is my workspace. <laughs> so you're there on business as a result of your ability to influence people. And you get to bring your, get to bring yes. your daughter along with you on these trips, which is amazing. Yes. So she has a different, this, these are her Zoom backgrounds, whether it's, uh, where did we come from? San Antonio or, or Charleston. <laughs> Amazing. So, yeah. Um, sorry. No. So I, I, I always, that's, that's the biggest um, scare for us, but not really um, that something new is going to come where now we 
have invested all this time and money and just our heart into one platform. But that's why it's very important as a business to um, capture, you know, audiences from all different types. And, you know, the beautiful thing about social media is um, they're all curated to, to a certain type. Facebook is older, yes, but it's great. I like Facebook because you can manage easier. You can manage your audience easier. Mm -hmm. um, you can connect with families. You can really, you know, just, it's, it's a great tool. Um, Instagram, I'm very visual. So Instagram's my baby. Um, there are people who are just technical that just need to read words. That's what Twitter is for. It's awesome. Yep. You know, um, LinkedIn, that's great for all the, you know, the, it's the professional social media, you know? So I believe YouTube, it's great for tutorials. It's it's great, you know. Um, can you apply it for the for the most part? Yes, but there are still certain um, secrets and you know tactics. certain tips and tactics and metrics that that lie within each platform. That's different, you know, from the others. So. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I've kind of been but, watching him for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, in a year or two ago, he made a post, a short video, and you're talking about, I think he called it uh, 7921 or 8119. Basically, his point was 80% and 20%. Spend 80% on your core competency, in your case, maybe like Instagram. And then that yeah. other 20%, you're still experimenting with, exploring, um, and directing that other 20% to the other platforms because they're necessary, but one platform might specifically suit your business or personality. Um, and that's the one that needs the majority of your attention. So I right. just thought that was kind of applicable to this conversation. Yeah. And you know, another thing is, you know, everyone's always like diversify, 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 but I focus more on being perfect, just really reaching your goals in one area and then, you know, expanding out when you have time, you know, just to, to kind of maintain that focus and effectiveness. Yep. Yep. Well, we're approaching an hour here. Was there anything else uh, regarding evokery or uh, at Come Fly With Love that you would like to address that maybe we haven't addressed? Or are there any questions that you wished I would have asked that maybe I did not ask? Um. You know, this is, yeah, this is, it, this is meant to be fun. You know, life should be fun. Nothing should be as serious as, as, um, even though I take my business serious, it's seriously, it's very, it's just a way to have fun. It's just another outlet. I think that we're too serious. And so we miss again, that story and I think this is a great, you know, opportunity to share your story as a brand, as a person, as a company, as a small restaurant, or your services as well. The, these are great marketing tools. They're very necessary. Um, and so I'm, I'm grateful that this was my, you know, work realm, you know, during, during the pandemic, because um, my business contracts literally shot up, you know, like, Amazing. I don't. I don't have to pitch anymore, you know, <laughs> like those days. Woo. Um, I don't have to pitch anymore. Um, and I feel comfortable making the mistakes that I'm making now. Um, but it's, it's, it, it's a fun, you know, area that I think everyone should, um, even as an individual, everyone should, you know, experiment or get better on with. To close out, I'd kind of like to address monetization. At yeah. what point did you realize that you could and should monetize your personal brand? Um, day one. Okay. So, so that was your intention from the get go. Absolutely. Um, my girlfriend said to me, Hey, let's be influencers. And I said, uh, I was like, what's an influencer? She was just like, you just post shit and get free shit all day long. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, sure. And then I realized I was like, oh, I could really do this. You know, I was on Facebook and um, Snapchat 
but I was like, oh, I can't do another platform. Like, this is too much, you know, like I'm all over the place anyway. So I was like, this is way too much. And then I started looking into it. I said, okay, well, let me check this out. This is a, the newest thing. I like posting pictures. I like, I like what I see so far. So let me get into it. So I literally dove in and I dove into this, this Instagram game seriously. When I meant seriously, like when I make mistakes, I make mistakes to get better. You know, I want to make mistakes so I get better. Um, when I, I got these mentors immediately, I was like, tell me how to do this. Tell me how to do that. Um, I researched my stuff before I talked to these mentors. So I got, I pulled the, the best knowledge from them. I went to, um, uh, I took classes online, all the classes. I still take classes. I take four classes a week. You know, there's so many social media classes out there. It's just finding the right one, you know? Um, and, th and that's kind of the premise of my, my classes and my seminars is to just dump on people what I know. Um, I, I, I mean, I've done so much with this brand. I've invested so much with this, excuse me, with this platform and this, this how do I say it? This handle and this business idea, because I knew that it was a business from the start and I knew there was money to be made. And there's so much money in this pot that you could do it together. There is no competition. That's the mm -hmm. most beautiful thing about Instagram and, and the world. There's no competition. You know, there's no, you know, niche audience. There's so many people out there looking and, and you know, who need your service or product, you know? Um, and so what I did was I literally grew from, you know, that into what I am today. Um, kind of forgot the question. What were, what did you ask me? The, the monetization, you know, your intentions oh, yeah. so, were to monetize initially. Yeah, go ahead. So then I, okay. Yeah. So get me back on track. So then at 18 months, I gained my 50,000, 50,000 follower, you know, um, I guess, goal. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I thought, oh, I could, I can make money totally missing all the time before that, because you can be a nano answer with nano influencer with 500 followers and make money, you know? And so, um, 50,000. Yeah. I think it was maybe I have to look back. Um, I love milestones like this of maybe 40,000 is when I realized that I can make money. Um, a company reached out to me and was like, Hey, listen, you can, if you do this, we'll pay you this amount that thousands of dollars. And I was like, Whoa, for my first contract, this is ridiculous. I was like, let's go. Cause once you see those zeros <laughs> in the comma for one picture guys, <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, but so that, I mean, that's when I realized that uh, I was like, okay, yeah, but you have to, you have to get there, you know, you have to get there. You have to be prepared in your mind. You know, there was a lot that I had to change with my life. Um, as an influencer, I, I, I had to deal with the whole security thing, you know, just having people know where I'm at. I've learned throughout the time, throughout time, not to post live, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I've had people, I've posted live before and people have caught me off guard. Like, Hey, I follow you, you know, I'm here. And I'm thinking, <laughs> why did I post? I know better, but wow. you know, as a female drinking in Nashville, mm -hmm. um, he's probably going to hear that, but that's well, okay. that. <laughs> Talk about a certain amount of celebrity though, huh? That's when you know you made it when somebody's in the same town as you watching you live looking for you. Um, the other thing that's really interesting is, you know, you were talking about your first deal, um, X amount of dollars for a picture. Um, mm -hmm. You have pivoted, like there's so many different ways to make money. It's not just the picture, the video. I mean, you're now teach to grow a class for kids, right? Um, you know, evokery and getting businesses to build their, their, their brands. There is no one way. There's a million ways for you to make oh, money yeah. in this business. This um, is amazing. It's big. It's out there. There's 
just, it's just out there. That pot it's is fun. so big. And there is no like, limit. There, there's no, there's no cookie there's cutter no business limit. model. It's do no what limit. makes sense no for you. And you know? the best thing with this too, is you're doing what you love, right? You love to travel, you yeah. you know, like everything, like some of your clients, makeup company, beauty salons, like I imagine you love that stuff. It's you're doing and focusing exactly what you want to do. And you're doing it with a cell phone and talk about well, opportunity. Yeah. You know, my life motto is it came from my dad who said, you know, I know you're, I had another company before I flew and he said, you know, you're doing what you love. No, excuse me. You're making a lot of money, but I want you to know that in life, you're never, you're never successful unless you're happy. Okay. 100%. And he taught me that I think I was 22 years old. Um, so then I became a flight attendant and I, I wanted to, um, I wanted to, just have fun and then get out of it and go back to what I was doing or whatever. And I end up staying here because, and my life just, my, my life value just shot up because I mean, I was really doing what I love. I think that if you always do what you love, no matter what it is, you know, people are so stressed out right now. They're, a lot of them have lost jobs. They're trying to find, you know, they're trying to find that solution. The solution is really easy guys. Like I've, I'm always happy. And the reason I'm happy is because I'm always doing what I love. I'm always talking to people who, whom I love. I'm always reading stuff that I love. You know, um, it's just, if you just follow that, whatever it is, if you're not doing something that, not that you like, but that you love, you're doing the wrong, you're wasting time. We have just a short amount of time on this earth. Why not do something productive with it? You know, so that's great advice. Yeah. Before we close out one more question, you touched on micro influencer. Sure. Um, what, what kind of income or deal size could a micro influencer realistically, um, expect assuming their, their tactics are refined, um, yeah, if they have and, a and right niche, they've created that niche um, with what they're doing. You could be a master biker, you know, and if you have 300, influence, uh, 300 followers, then bike companies are going to come to you because they know that those 300, the smaller you are, majority um, of your followers are loyal to you. They're your close knit sure people. Mm -hmm. Those are your, those are people you really can influence. And most likely they will say yes. Yep. You know, so, um, what, what are they looking at? It, it, if, if your niche is defined, um, then you can, it's exponential. There's just so much money to be made, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. I mean, I just, I cannot say that enough. It's, it's out there, um, to what to expect. I wouldn't expect, I wouldn't focus more on the making money side more than the growing and becoming good because eventually people will see you out there, you know, so take as many classes as you can take my class, um, take, you know, I have a class on monetizing as well. Um, it's just amazing how much opportunity there is through social, through digital media, digital media and digital marketing. Yep. So awesome. Well, we've taken enough of your time away from the beaches of Key West. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate I'm gonna go it. eat a peel peel and eat like a big bowl of peel and eat shrimp oh, cool. and stone crab. It's stone crab season and I have been waiting. I came last time in July and they didn't have it. I was the most disappointed person on earth. So now I'm gonna eat some stone crab legs. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. All right, guys, check her out on Instagram at come fly with love and uh, evokery.com. Enjoy your Thanks, uh, Key West vacation. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.